Erev Shabbat Shalom Rabotai. We are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi Mesechet Tirumot. We are up to Perik Hey Mishnachet. Today's Mishnah should be Le'en Nushmat, Neriah ben Svidlana Aranbaev, and Eliyahu ben Burcha Israelov, Minuchatam began Eden. Amen. In yesterday's Mishnah, we discussed a case where one Se'ah Tiruma after another fell into Chulin, and after each Se'ah fell in, a Se'ah was separated from the mixture. In today's Mishnah, we're going to discuss a similar case, that one Se'ah Tiruma after another fell into Chulin. However, here a Se'ah was not separated from the mixture each time. So the Mishnah says, Se'ah Tiruma shenafla lemeah. If a Se'ah of Tiruma fell into 100 Se'ah of Chulin, but the owner did not have a chance to remove a sa until another se'ah of tiruma fell in. This mixture is forbidden to Anan Kohen. And Vashim explained, since the se'ah was not removed after the first se'ah became mixed in, it is considered as if the two se'ah of tiruma fell in together. Therefore, since 100 se'ah of chulin are not enough to nullify two se'ah of tiruma, the produce is miduma, a mixture of tiruma and chulin, which is prohibited to a non kohen. Had he removed a se'ah from the mixture before the second se'ah of tiruma fell in, it would have been permitted because each se'ah of tiruma would have been considered separately. That, that would have been considered that it fell separately. Therefore, the first se'ah would have been nullified before the second se'ah fell in. But since here he didn't remove a se'ah from the mixture before the second one fell in, it is considered as if both. Se'ab to Uma fell in together and they are not nullified. But Rabbi Shimon disagrees with the Chachamim. Rabbi Shimon permits the mixture because once he planned to lift out a Se'ab, it is as if he has already lifted it out. Therefore, the first Se'ab is already considered to have been nullified by the time the second Se'ab fell in. Rabbi Shimon's position in many situations, the Rab brings us down uh, by a case of Ahmed Lizrok, Gizorek Dami. If something that is going to be done, I'm sorry, Rabbi Shimon's position is that something that is going to be done is considered as if it was already done. So here too, same thing. It is considered as if he already removed the sa, and therefore the first sa is already nullified. But the Rav throws in another aspect of this case, and he, it makes a difference between if you knew or you didn't know. What does that mean? The Rav writes like this. The Rabbi Shimon Mati, Rabbi Shimon permits, Kishelo no dano nefira rishona ad nefila shniya. When you're not made aware that the first one fell in until after the second one fell in, Rabbi Shimon agrees that it's considered as if they fell at the same time, and he would prohibit it. Keep Palik, when does Rabbi Shimon argue with the sages? When you became aware of it in between. So I, I became aware that the first staff fell in, but I didn't have the opportunity to remove it until the second one fell in. So Rabbi Shimon holds... Since you wanted to take the first sa'ah out, it's considered as if it was already taken out. When the second sa'ah fell in, it's as if it's there on its own. But the Chachamim disagree. They say it physically has to be removed. And the Rav tells us that Chachamim, the Rav follows the opinion of the sages. So it comes out, Rabbi Shimon only disagrees with the Chachamim when you became aware between the first sa'ah falling and the second one that it fell. But if you didn't know until the second one fell, the two fell in, it would be considered as if they fell in at the same time and you, it would be a su. Now, that is it, Rabbi Mishnah Chet. Mishnah Ted is the final Mishnah of Perikei, and the uh, Mishnah is going, to, Perik is going to conclude with a number of other halachot regarding Tiruma that became mixed into Chulin. The Mishnah is going to begin with a discussion concerning grain that is ground into flour. When wheat is ground into flour, the volume of the flour may be more or less than it was before, depending on its quality. If it is high quality grain, the volume will be more. If it's low quality, the volume will be less because low quality grain contains a greater percentage of waste than high quality grain. So the Mishnah says, If a se'ah teruma produce fell into 100 se'ah of chulin produce and was therefore nullified, but someone then ground the mixture and as a result it decreased in volume, we say, just as the chulin produce decreased in volume, so too the tiruma produce decreased in volume. And therefore, we can assume that, chula, that the chulin and tiruma were of equal quality and they both decreased in volume equally. We don't say that maybe the chulin was of lower quality than the tiruma and therefore the chulin can no longer be 100 times more as the tiruma. Rather, we assume that both decreased in volume equally. Right? Keshem she pachatu chulin kach 
Pachetat Teruma. Just as the Chulin produce decreased in volume, so do the Teruma produce decreased in volume equally. Umutar. Therefore, the mixture remains permitted to a non Kohen because there is still 100 times more Chulin than Teruma. Se'at Teruma shenafala lefachot mi me'a utchanan ve'otiru. If a se'av teruma fell into less than 100 se'av chulin and the entire mixture was therefore forbidden to anad kohen as miduma, but utchanan ufeotiru, but some then gra- someone then ground the mixture and as a result it increased in volume, kishem shaotua chulin kachutira teruma. We say just as the chulin flower became greater in volume, so too the teruma flower increased in volume, the asur, and therefore the mixture is still asur, prohibited. Because the chulin is still less than 100 times the teruma. The Mishnah continues, However, if it is known that the chulin wheat was of higher quality than the teruma's wheat, and the chulin wheat therefore increased in volume more than the teruma wheat, causing the chulin to be 100 times more than the teruma, mutar is permitted to an ankoen, and you're even allowed to grind it initially, the Rav says, the chatchila. Although normally you cannot be mevatel something like chatechila, you can't nullify something that is prohibited or nullify tiluma. Here you have no intention to nullify the tiluma, you have intention to grind it. And by grinding it happens to be that it will nullify it. And the Mishnah says that is allowed. The Mishnah concludes by saying you are not is prohibited to nullify tiluma with chulin. So the Mishnah discusses a case where there was not enough chulin to nullify the tiluma and later more chulin was added to the mixture. Se'at teruma shenafal lefechod mimea. If a se'at teruma produce fell into less than 100 se'at chulin produce, v'achal kach naflu sham chulin, and afterwards chulin fell into the mixture, bringing the total amount of chulin into 100 se'at, im shogeg mutar, v'im mezid asur. The Mishnah says, the halacha is like this. If the chulin fell in by mistake, it is permitted to a non-Kohen. Since there's now enough produce, there's now enough, there, since now there is enough chulin, to nullify the teruma, the mixture can be eaten after se'ah of produce which is given to a kohen is removed. Even though you're not allowed to add to a mixture to nullify it, here it was done by mistake, and therefore the mixture does not remain asu. They mizid asu, but if it was done on purpose, it's prohibited to a non-kohen, because if someone intentionally nullifies something that is prohibited by the Torah, it remains prohibited. That is in Rabotai, today's Mishnah Yomi. Everybody should have an Erev Shabbat Shalom. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.